Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the FBI YouTube channel. My name is Cindy Valentina from Valentina Cowgirl and many of you might know that my mare Crystal got pregnant in February for the first time. I'm gonna be a first time grandma. So naturally I have so many questions. I've never experienced a birth. I don't know anything about breeding or reproduction. So today I decided to interview her reproduction vet and ask her a couple questions because as a first time grandma, I have a lot. <laughs> and if you follow me on Instagram, I also asked you guys on there to send me some questions if you guys have any questions for a reproduction vet. So you might see your question in this video. I'm super excited, I can't wait to learn. And yeah, let's head on over. Alright guys, so I'm here with Dr. Carolyn from Buena Vista Farms Reproduction Center here in Ocala and she has actually been Crystal's reproduction vet since the beginning, since this all happened and as you guys know, I'm a paranoid horse mom and I have a million questions all the time and she has been amazing answering all of them, even the silliest ones. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and ask her some more and you guys also sent in some of your questions. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Are you excited? I'm very excited. Awesome, let's do it. <laughs> So a lot of these questions might seem like common sense to some of you guys, but this is kind of like a beginner version of this. So there might be some questions that need a little bit more detail and some that you guys probably already know the answer to. So I'm going to start with the first question and it is how long is a horse pregnancy? Well, the average is 340 days, which is approximately 11 months. My horses are very different from most other species in that they can go very much longer and it can be normal and they can go very much shorter and it can be normal. Is it normal for them to like reach a full year? Not normal, but it happens. Like if it does, yeah. that's something... It can still be a perfectly normal fall. Um. The tricky part is trying to figure out exactly when they're going to fall because you do have like this month window that's normal. You can't just say, okay, she's due that day, this is when I'm going to watch her. Yeah. It doesn't work out. Like you said, we should usually do it like two weeks before, uh -huh. like have the horses in. Yeah. Um, another question is, do mares show any pregnancy symptoms? Like if you don't know that they're pregnant, do they show signs? Like you know how humans get morning sickness, yeah. all these other things. I don't know about the morning sickness, but I never <laughs> noticed that. Um, a lot of times you'll find that they get easier to deal with because they have high progesterone levels, which is kind of tranquilizing. Mm -hmm. So people will say, gosh, this mare used to be such a, you know, hard to deal with and now she's so laid back. It doesn't always happen, but that's one thing I've noticed. Oh my uh, gosh, that's yeah. so interesting. You would think that they would get more hormonal, right? Yeah. Like more emotional and stuff, that's like, no. no? It seems like it's a more of a steady increase of the progesterone that makes them more laid back. Um, can you ride a pregnant horse? A lot of people had this question, and I had this question too in the beginning. I had no idea. I just assumed, oh, they're pregnant. You can't ride, but... Absolutely, you can ride them. If they're used to being ridden, if they're in shape, keep going with what you're doing until, I would say, the last three months. And then I would, I mean, you can probably ride them easy, like just walking around. Yeah, like can't like, take them no barrel races yeah. or jumping shows and stuff like I, that. Yeah, I wouldn't start like a whole new training regimen while they're pregnant, but if they're in shape and you're already doing stuff with them, there's really no reason to stop. I even have a few racehorse clients that race their mares pregnant. Really? Yeah, but it's, <gasps> it's getting kind of rare. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I would be too paranoid to do that. I can't. <laughs> This one's one that's super interesting. I've asked myself this so many times and a lot of you guys ask me too. Like, a lot of you guys want me to do a gender reveal, but <laughs> I don't think that, can you? Can you tell? It but is possible. It is? Um, but there's a very specific window, like you have to be within 65 to 67 days pregnant. And then it takes a lot of, like I don't personally do it, there's people in Ocala that do. Um, they need a special ultrasound and they can tell you. You can do it again later too, like when they're five, six months pregnant, but going transabdominally oh, okay. and, and looking for the actual parts, you know, like you do it in a human baby. Yeah, that's actually how I thought it worked when I came for her first ultrasound. I was very surprised to find out that it wasn't really like that, but yeah. that's very interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. I think I would like to wait until it's born, you know, like I like the surprise yeah. and stuff. I mean, what's the point? You don't you yeah. can't change it. And mm -hmm. they do it in the thoroughbred sometimes because when they sell the mare in the oh, auction, they yeah. want to know if she's carrying a cold or feeling. So oh. That's really the only reason, or curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> I, I prefer a surprise, but I don't know if I'd feel that way about human baby. I think I'd want to know if like, I was having a girl or right. But my horse, I think it's more fun. <laughs> Do you still, if ever, this is a fun question, get grossed out? 
I really don't. No. <laughs> that's, that's really, human things gross me out. Oh my god. Like same. if I saw your broken arm or something, that would probably gross me yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. Like horse stuff, horse poop, none of that grosses me out. But like dog poop or like human stuff, it's true. Yeah, I can't exactly. get used to a specific way. And... I think that a lot of horse owners aren't like that. Like I wipe my horse's eye boogers with my hand. Like I, <laughs> my mom tells me all the time, she's like, put gloves on. But I'm so used to it. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't mind. How long after a mare has given birth can you start riding again? Uh, that's a good question too. I mean, your, your main thing is you're going to have a baby by your side. Mm. So until the age where the baby gets weaned, it's kind of hard to ride the mare because you have have to take yeah. the baby long or mm -hmm. she'll get all upset so I think physically she can probably get ridden again pretty quickly. Oh really? Yeah. What is like the most common like what do people do until the baby's weaned? Yeah. A lot of people don't ride their horses anymore once they're pregnant anyway. They just become brood mares. You know? oh. It's like their next career. Okay. They take them out of circulation so long. If they are really good show horses, what they usually do is do the embryos. You oh, know, the embryo actually, transfer. Yeah. Okay. This is actually uh, related to that question. After birth, does a mare's body go back to the same way it was before pregnancy? Like the confirmation and all that stuff, is it the same as a mare's who's never been pregnant? I think if it's a single pregnancy, she probably does. Go back. go back, but if you have a fall every year, they start getting that broodmare look with the big belly. Okay. And it's hard to get that back into shape. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to be Crystal's only pregnancy, yeah. so hopefully she yeah. just goes back. And you know, the first pregnancies I usually don't get as large anyway, so okay. she'll probably get right back. About how long is labor? Um, extremely fast compared to humans. Um, oh, really? By the time you notice labor, which is already stage two, because the first stage is pretty silent and you don't notice it, mm -hmm. pretty much 20 minutes. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no wonder so many people miss it. Exactly. <laughs> and it's a lot easier than humans. Believe me, I had a child. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I know how that is. Oh my gosh. Um, for the most part, it's a lot easier. And I think it's because horses are so streamlined. They're not so hard to get out as like a big mm. round human head. True. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell the color of a foal before it's born? No. Again, even if you could, I would like to be surprised. <laughs> You know how when humans are pregnant, there's certain things you can't eat, there's certain creams you can't put on. Is it the same with pregnant mares? Uh, that's an interesting question. I, I don't think so. No? I've never come across that where a mare is all of a sudden not tolerant of something. Mm -hmm. As far as things that would affect the fetus of the baby, yes. You know, like medications that you wouldn't want to get into the baby's bloodstream, like hormones or steroids or things like that, yes. But not like food. Anything like that. How about like dewormer, no. uh, colic, uh, sand colic stuff, yeah. supplements? No, I mean there used to be a big thing with wormers years ago because there used to be a lot more stress on the system. Nowadays the modern wormers, you use them just like you would if she wasn't pregnant. Same with most vaccinations. What is the safest age for mares to get pregnant? Like what is the ideal age? I would say definitely not before three. I feel like there's still babies before yeah. three. I can't imagine. Yeah. And then you don't want to wait too late because then it gets harder to get them pregnant. So I would say mm -hmm. at least by the age of 10. Okay. Yeah. Do you think horses know they're pregnant? <laughs> yeah, that's a, you're asking me to be a horse I know, I know. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna put my opinion out there. I feel like Crystal knows. Yeah. Like I'm just probably being like crazy. But like when I bring her in for her ultrasound, she walks right in, even though she already knows what's gonna happen. I feel like I don't know. I don't know. I might be crazy, but I feel like she does. They probably do. To yeah. Some extent, yeah. And then the mares that have had babies, yeah. they know what's about to happen, I think. You know, mm -hmm. They're a lot more relaxed than the mares that haven't had babies, you know, so that at least they learn. Yeah, remember. Yeah. Do you have any crazy falling out stories? Like, what's the craziest thing that's ever happened? Oh, man. We probably have a lot, right? I feel like things go wrong with horses all the time. I've been doing this for 25 years, so there's a lot of oh stories. <laughs> One of them that I can remember is that at another farm, a client of mine called me up and she said, you know, is it possible to have just a placenta and no baby? And you know, the placenta is the afterbirth, yeah. right? Like, so they, oh my gosh. they went out in the paddock and the mare was there and there was this afterbirth, but there was no baby. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I said, I said, well, it's not possible. There has to be a baby somewhere. <laughs> so um, they looked at, they looked everywhere and they found the baby at the next farm sitting in a field. Oh and what, what had happened goodness. was that she was in a paddock at night, falling by herself, which you're not supposed to do anyway, but and she fold under the fence. Oh. So the baby was born on the other side. side of the fence. <gasps> oh my gosh. <laughs> I would have like a panic attack. It, That's it so really crazy. Insane. She seemed perfectly happy was just sitting there. <laughs> Waiting for her mom to show up, I guess. Oh my gosh. <laughs>
Well, my mom came over one day, she noticed Crystal was laying down, and she was like, oh my god, like, is she gonna hurt the baby? And my instinct was like, no, no, but then I, I started thinking about it. Could she? No. And actually, they'll start laying down more when they get heavy and fall because they, you know, they get tired. You'll see them just lay flat out. You know, instead oh of like God. sitting out, it's probably more comfortable lay flat out. Mm. To get the belly out of the way. Yeah. Because you think horses are so big and heavy, like, yeah. and there's like a little thing inside of them. Like, how could they not hurt them? But nature, you know, done it for millions of years. So, what is the most common reason for miscarriages in horses? These days, probably the most common one is infection, endometritis what they call it, where the placenta gets infected. Because horses are in an environment where they tend to be around a lot more dirt and bacteria, there can be an uh, infection that comes through the cervix into the uterus. That's probably the most common, especially older horses. The older the mare is, the more likely she's going to have problems with that. Sometimes they start out with a mild infection when they get bred, and then they it just yeah develops. Yeah. Is it possible for horses to have more than one baby? Well, twins is a big problem for horses. They most of the time can't carry two, they don't have enough room, mm -hmm. so then they end up miscarrying oh. if they end up getting two. So, so it's super rare, right, for yeah, twins I mean, to be born? Nowadays, because we have ultrasound, we can tell if there's two and we can get rid of one. So, oh, but yeah. you have to do that really early, like at 14 days. My neighbors had a set of twins. Really? <laughs> yeah, the problem is they, they end up being extremely small and weak if they yeah, have Yeah, that's what I heard, that yeah. if there are one of them, it's always little. There's always that case, you know, I know there's horses out there that are twins that made it, but it's, you don't want twins. Twins is not a good idea. So I'm assuming like triplets and stuff, that's like impossible. I've seen triplets on ultrasound. No way. Yeah, but that's very... Oh my weird. gosh. Yeah. That's shocking. <laughs> I would have never imagined, because I don't know, horses are just so big. I can't picture more than yeah. one than one. You don't have enough room. <laughs> what happens, this is actually a question that I wrote down. What happens to the umbilical cord once the baby's born? Like, you know, in humans, you have to like tie and then cut. How does that work? In humans, if you didn't have scissors, it would just fall off on its own too. <laughs> we usually wait on that. What happens is they're both laying down. The mare will usually get up before the baby, and when she gets up, it just naturally breaks. Oh, There's okay. like a thinner place there okay. and, it, and it breaks there. Sometimes we have to cut them but most of the time. So just by like standing up? Yeah. Okay. What are some myths about equine pregnancy? Are there any? I feel like I haven't heard any myths or anything. I think. I mean there, there is that thing about if you make your mare pregnant then she's going to be you know, like some people will do that to calm them down. Oh really? Yeah. And like I said I think it works with the progesterone in some cases but I don't think it works like after they're done. You know mm. they think it calms them down oh, for life. for life once they have Yeah. Okay. I don't think that works. I can't think of anything else. I've never heard of that one. There's um, all kinds of crazy things with in certain breeds people want to have either a filly or a colt and mm. so they have all these ideas on how to make that happen. Oh my god. <laughs> like, <laughs> like if I give them like this put vinegar in their food. They're gonna get more. They're gonna be more likely to have Philly. You know. Oh my kind of, gosh. Those kind of stories. <laughs> what are the signs that a mare is ready? Like that she's about to fold out. Also very variable. And in okay. maiden mares like yours, sometimes they don't show you any. Mm. But the most normal thing is their udder, their back, as we call it, back, gets bigger, starts filling up with milk. So you need to keep an eye on that. It starts slowly, like three weeks before, and then gets really full a couple days before they're ready. Okay. They have muscles that relax along their top line, where the tail is, all those relax. That's relax cool. visually? Like you'll, you'll see it different? Yeah, and if you touch them too, you can see that everything. It's, it's the ligaments that are okay. you know, getting longer. The tail gets relaxed. Mm -hmm. If you move it up and down, it's just... And then when they're very close, mares are supposed to have what they call wax, which is... Yeah, I've heard that, but I never understood what... It's just basically that. little droplets of milk at the end of their teeth. It's very thick, so it looks like wax. That's like an indication that it's going to happen in the next two days. Oh wow. But there's a lot of mirrors that never wax. So mm -hmm. you can't count on that either. <laughs> oh my god, that's one thing I've learned is that I might miss it. Yeah. Like I'm preparing myself to be okay if I miss it because everything that I've read and everything that she's told me is like, how am I gonna know unless I sleep with her 24-7 yeah. every day? <laughs> For Which two weeks. I might do. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> and then you go to the bathroom and then mm. she has it. <laughs> yeah. And then they get they get restless. They'll start walking more and pooping more. But Sometimes I don't show you anything. I hope Crystal <laughs> shows me something. I can't miss it. Well, you know her so well that like, yeah. you may be able to tell better than somebody else, you know? True. Are there more risks to maiden mares? Definitely. 
Yeah. You know, only because everything is still very tight. The pelvic area is smaller. The mares don't know themselves. I think the mares help themselves a lot when there's a problem. If they're not experienced, they're not as good at that. Mm -hmm. You know. So yes, definitely. I think most of our problems come with the first. And if you guys don't know what maiden means, like I said, this is like a beginner video. I didn't really know. I had to Google it. Maiden is a first time mom, right? right? Exactly. A mare that's pregnant for the first time. Exactly. Do mares give birth standing or laying down? No, laying down. Laying down? Yeah. If they're comfortable. If you're there during the following, you have 10 people in the stall and they're not mm -hmm. happy, then they might start falling standing up. One know? of the worries I have is like, what if she's too close to a wall or something? Yeah, I mean, you have to get her up and move her. We have done that. Um, where we're like, how is how is that coming out? It's not gonna come out, and we have moved them. I mean, that's a big stall. I don't know if you have one yeah. of those, but okay. yeah, usually they have their like folding stalls, which are a lot bigger than just an average stall. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what happens to preemies, babies uh, like premature? premature? Is that like common? Do we have incubators? Is that what it's called? The human babies where yeah. they put them in incubators? <laughs> we don't have incubators, but we do have what they call neonatal units okay. um, over at the referral hospital. So if I have a fall that's like they might need oxygen, they have whole, they, instead of putting it in an incubator, they'll put the whole stall into oxygen. Oh, you know? okay. They'll need a lot of nursing care because a lot of these babies can't get up on their own. Oh. So they have to be moved back and forth and they have to be on IVs. And a lot of them, you can make it. The problem is they have all the technology. It's just very expensive. Mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of people yeah. just can't afford it. And then a lot of times they'll have issues with their legs because the bones aren't completely formed and then you'll end up with a baby that won't be an athlete. Yeah. yeah. And it's usually due to some kind of placental problem that's the most common. How does a pregnant mare's diet change? Or how should it change? Then you don't really need to change much until like in the last three months. And then you will need to increase her nutrition so that when she falls, you don't want her to be fat, but you need her to have enough yeah, she's going to be nursing a baby that's going to require a lot of calories. So we, we tend to see mothers who really drop their weight after they start nursing. So you want them to have a good head start. So a good quality grain, 16% protein and alfalfa. There are specific mare diets, but I think if you have a high quality feed, you'll be fine. Okay. The mare in full, that comes after birth or, or you like... You can start before. Before birth. Uh -huh. Okay. And then continue it. They really use a lot of calories the first three months. And after that, the baby doesn't nurse as much. For mare and foal, I've always been confused. Do you feed that to the foal as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Usually, they'll just eat out with the mare. And it depends. Some mares won't let their babies eat. Uh -huh. So you have to give them a little bit of supplement in a different way. But most mares will. My mares are amazing. They're usually very good mothers. I'm so excited to see Crystal as a mom. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> my heart's gonna be so full. <laughs> What are the main risks? Like, what are the things that... Like, you know, I've always been paranoid. Like, when Crystal was pregnant, she spooked at some balloons. And I was like, Dr. Carolyn! Oh. She spooked! Yeah, oh, um, stress, the yeah, yeah, losing the baby. I would say the infection thing is probably the biggest thing. Um, if you have a bear that's older, there's a couple of extra things you can do, like ultrasound more often. And we can actually look at the placenta and see what it looks like. Okay. If it's thicker, we can put her on antibiotics. If they have a history, there's also supplement hormone supplements you can give but a normal young bear you really don't need to do anything you don't have to worry about the stress unless i mean tr we transport them back and forth from kentucky and you know they're fine yeah okay um, i was i especially in the summer i'm always like oh is it too hot is she sweating too much yeah. is she stressed out is this gonna spook her should i like walk around like i don't know I, i'm very like a normal horse the heat stress i think here is significant Especially since I think it makes them lose weight when mm -hmm. you're trying to make them yeah, gain weight. Yeah, that's true. You know? This gets super hot here. Should you help with the birth? Okay. Or when do you think is a good time to step in? Okay, that's a very good question actually. I think most people help too much. Yeah, right? Most of the time they do it, it's just not fast enough and you get nervous, you know? Mm -hmm. I think with when you have a, a young man like yours and everything might be a little tight, it doesn't hurt. If she's already laying down laterally and everything's coming out and she's relaxed about you being in the stall, it doesn't hurt to put a little pressure on the legs that are coming out just okay. to help her. You know, if you don't want to pull, you just you just basically... Hold it? Yeah. Okay, because so. I've seen, I've been watching a lot of videos. <laughs> I heard that once the nose is out, you shouldn't let it come back in. No, that's not true. No? Or if the, is the back? What yeah, is, the, is that what it's called? The amniotic sac. Yeah. The amniotic sac. If it's open already, it doesn't matter if the baby goes back in. Like, it doesn't really matter at all. 
and so what, what happens is until the baby is all the way out, it's still getting its oxygen through its umbilical cord. Okay. So you don't have to worry until the whole placenta comes out and the baby's out. You don't you don't have to worry about that. Okay. What does happen is if you have a dystocia, which is a problem falling, and the baby just can't get out, the umbilical cord can get squished against the pelvis, um, and that's how they lose their oxygen. Okay. Yeah. So if everything is the right, like the legs come out like a swimmer, yeah. like that. See, I've been learning that stuff, Dr. Carolyn. <laughs> I've been doing my research. <laughs> One has to be a little bit in yeah, front of the other. That's so that the shoulders have room to come out. Okay. If and you, the nose is usually right, right in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you see that, I would just leave it alone. It'll progress forward and in a young mare it'll be a little slower. Mm -hmm. And the older mare sometimes is just and they're out. <laughs> so, okay. But sometimes if you go in there and you want to help, she gets up. Oh, yeah, because she's nervous. Nervous, yeah. Sometimes it's better just to. And if there's a lot of people too, yeah. it's probably. In nature, I think they would rather just do them. So. Mm -hmm. Is there a danger if there's a size difference between the stallion and the mare? Like if you have a draft stallion yeah. and a like quarter horse mare, yeah. is it possible for the baby to be too big for mom? They used to tell us that mares are very good at adjusting the weight on their babies as opposed to cows who have a lot of big problem with that. Mm. But I think there is a little bit. I mean, I don't think I would breed. Yeah, I wouldn't. And it's a really small mare to a really large stallion. Just to be safe. I feel like that's like... And there seem to be some mares that just have big babies no matter what you breed to them and they have a little bit harder time. Is C-section something that happens in mares? Mm -hmm. So if I have a really big problem, and I usually know, and this happens every year, um, we fill out 80 babies and probably have one or two that are going to be a problem. Okay. So I usually know like within 10 minutes, okay, I can go in there and feel like sh that something's not right, like there's the head's back or one of the legs not mm -hmm. in our position. We hook up the trailer and we take her down the road, and they may either do a C-section or they can just anesthetize the mare, and that way you don't have all the contractions, and they can manipulate the baby better that way and get it out. Okay. Like, is the baby still viable if the mare passes away during labor? Yeah, if it's fast enough. Fast? Okay. God forbid that happens. Yes. <laughs> um, is it better for a mare to pull out in a pasture or in a stall? I think it depends on the situation. If you have a really nice pasture and it's clean and there's not manure and fire ants everywhere, pasture is just as well. Okay. Um, the problem with the pasture for me is that you don't have any lights out there. Oh yeah, so you can't see what's going on. Yeah. If there's a problem. Yeah. Okay. But it is clean, you know, especially compared to some barns. It's clean yeah. out there. It's That's true. Do the babies kick the mom inside? I've seen it. Yeah? Yeah, I've seen it. Oh my gosh. If the day I see that, I'm going to freak <laughs> out. <laughs> Does the mare feel it? Like, obviously, yeah, but do you think it's painful for them? No, no. It's just uncomfortable. They get very uncomfortable at the end. Okay. Especially when it's hot out. So they get miserable just like humans. Like, oh my gosh, this is so heavy. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if like, I put my hand on her belly during the end, if I like, feel it. You know, I'll just stay there all the time just to get one little kick. <laughs> what is the best way to prepare your mare for birth? Like walking her around, getting stuff moving? Yeah, we don't really do that much. Um, we like to give them a bath and clean their udder, you know, make mm -hmm. sure that everything's like clean. <gasps> I didn't even think about that. Yeah. We try not to change their routine too much. We don't want to get them all nervous. So, you know, we keep them in the barn and at night, turn them out during the day, you know. You make up your mind when you decide you want to have this thing. <laughs> <laughs> you want to let the mom and baby bond, right? Right. When is it okay to start working with the baby? It's, it's so dependent on I mean, if she's so, your mare is so comfortable with you that she doesn't get all nervous, then you can start messing with the baby right away. Okay. You know? And it's the more you handle the baby, the better. Yeah, because then it's... But if she, she may change her personality a little and become a little um, protective. Okay. And if that happens, I would just leave her alone. Yeah. They usually get over that after a couple of days. But some mares are like, yeah. get away from me, my baby. Mama bears. Yeah. They turn to mama bears. And if she's, you know, she's fine with you doing that, then I think it's fine. There's a thinking out there that the earlier you touch them and the earlier, like even their ears and things, that, they, that they're not going to have a problem with it later. Yeah. Okay. What is your favorite part about your job? Oh. Um, probably have so many. It's a great job. I would say definitely the babies, <laughs> right? Um, oh, yeah. And then, I mean, I, I just love the mares too. I love the way horses are such good mothers. And it's just a great thing to be around. I don't know, I love the signs of it too. I love the interesting cases. You know, yeah. even after 25 years, it's not, it's never boring. Yeah. So. I feel like babies are miracles. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Even even after you do it so many times, yeah. like you still get the rush, right? When it's like happening. Yeah. And oh you never gosh. quite know what it's going to look like, what it's going to be, you yeah. know, so.
I think that's the best part. Like being surprised, like boy, girl, buckskin, palomino, right. chestnut. <laughs> I get so many questions. Do you want a buckskin? Do you want a palomino? Do you want a boy or girl? I honestly don't know. And I think I would be happy with whatever we get. <laughs> yeah. That's all the questions. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I definitely did and I learn every time I come for Crystal's Ultrasounds, Sounds and I bring her a lot. <laughs> so thank you so much Dr. Carolyn. And if you guys are ever in the Ocala area and you have questions or you want to come and speak to Dr. Carolyn about maybe breeding your animals, your, your horses, <laughs> I'll definitely come check her out. I've learned so much and she's been great to Crystal. So thank you so much. No problem. If you guys like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any more questions, that weren't answered, leave them in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe to the FBI YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!